you can test something that you can physically touch even you can test something that you can see physically but how do you test something that is under the ground and most of the time you can't even see it i'm talking about the substation grounding and in this video i'll walk you through the different methods that are used to test the substation grounding Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Now in the previous video we talked about what is substation grounding and what is its important and many of you commented on that that you want to have a dedicated video on testing of substation grounding and based on all those comments here is a dedicated video on substation grounding. Now when it comes to test the substation grounding there are four methods that are generally used fall of potential ground grade integrity test soil resistivity test touch and step voltage measurement now even among these four methods generally you will find the first two methods that those are most commonly used soil resistivity touch and step potential can be performed for a green field project that means a substation that is being built newly so those are the four methods we'll understand how the testings are Perform. Now all these testings are generally you know guided by or the governed by the standards like IEEE 80 and 81. So that is basically for the guide on measurement of earth resistivity, ground impedance and earth surface potential of a grounding system. And uh, generally these standards are followed to test the substation grounding system. The steps are defined by these standards and those steps must be followed to get the accurate result. All right. So with that note, uh, let us first understand what is the purpose of substation grounding. Let's let's put it in a very simple term. We already talked about this uh, in our previous video. The first and the most important purpose is it should handle the high fault current. When the ground fault occurs, it should go through earth directly or even when the lightning happens, it should go directly to the ground and should not uh, you know, enter into any living being. That is the most important purpose that we have. Secondly, we can also say that it should keep the ground potential rise or GPR under a certain limit. If it's not under the limit, then what we will have, we will have step and touch potential, which is uh, dangerous for uh, the living beings. We, we discussed about those in, in the previous video. So these are the two major purposes of the grounding system. One, it should avoid all the faults. Second, well, of course, not all the faults, but at least it should divert the ground faults. Second, it should keep the ground potential rise at a minimum level, a level which is accepted by the standard and it's something uh, not harmful to the human beings or living beings. Now, the testing methods that you will see basically focuses on these two things and it's logical as well, right? Uh, we are testing the grounding system so that we know its resistance is low because only when only then uh, the fault current will pass through it otherwise it will not right and second what we need to make sure is uh, it the grid is healthy right these are the two things we are worried about and those things only uh, we will check one the impedance of the ground grid should be low so that the current passes through it second uh, the healthiness of the grid if there are some you know points are broken the connections are loose or some corrosion has happened so that is something we should know about so those are the two things we focus when we do testing on the substation grounding all right so now let us first start with the fall of potential now fall of potential is performed to check the impedance of the ground grid this is something important this is one of the major purpose of testing the uh, grounding grid because when the impedance is low then and only then the fault current will pass through it right if it is more then it may find some other path where uh, the current is getting less impedance it's it's very simple and very basic and the fall of potential basically is used to test that particular parameter it's very simple but yet very effective method of testing most of the time the results are accurate uh, and it's used worldwide to test uh, the healthiness of the grounding system because when the impedance is low that means the system is healthy as well right and now you can also use the word resistance here because what we are checking is only the copper wires resistance so resistance can also be used here 
now uh, the question is grounding system is under the ground how do we test it okay so let's let's understand that so what we do is we take the test meter meter which is basically this ground test ground uh, impedance test meter it's capable of uh, passing a short current waves or short uh, value of current through this we have two electrodes here you see one electrode we have connected to the earth grid that we have now please note before this test is performed it is important that you disconnect the earth grid from any other grounding system for example uh, the substation uh, grid you have also connected to the transmission tower so ideally you should disconnect that so that we get accurate result for our substation so one electrode we have connected to our earth grid the second we have placed inside uh, the ground now the distance between these two should be as per the standard 5 to 10 times than the uh, diagonal length of this grid so here is the example if let's say this is the diagonal length highest diagonal length and it's let's say 10 feet apart so ideally i should be placing the test electrode 10 times from that distance which is let's say 100 feet uh, near to 100 feet so i'll be placing that resistor 100 feet 100 feet apart from the uh, grid all right now what we will do we'll pass a current through this using this uh, test meter now the current will pass through this earth electrode then it will pass through the ground then it will go to the earth grid and then it will get back to the meter via this earth electrode thereby completing the circuit right this is uh, the current path this is the circuit that we have created now this is not testing okay we we need to measure the voltage drop that is happening between these two points so that we can calculate the resistance of course we cannot directly calculate the resistance so what we do is we calculate the voltage drop because we know uh, the current that we are passing through it because the current amount that we will select is known to uh, the tester so uh, that is something that we know and based on that we'll calculate the voltage drop that is happening and then uh, the resistance all right so what we do is we introduce another third electrode which is called let's say potential electrode and now that is placed inside the ground uh, but little near to the grid so what we'll do we'll measure the potential drop or the voltage drop between these two points and then we'll take a note of that similarly we'll remove this uh, electrode and put it to the next side so what we are doing first we have placed the potential ele electrode near to the earth grid then slowly we are taking it far away near to the earth grid so that we will measure the voltage drop, drop that is happening uh, across those points so once we will take the reading we'll move it to the next location take the reading we'll move it to the next location so in that way we'll take around 9 to 10 readings now this is recommended that you should at least have 9 to 10 reading for accurate result so here is a, a dummy example now these are the dummy value i have put just for explanation purpose so you see r1 is our first reading where the electrode was near to the earth grid and r9 is like the farthest uh, location of that uh, potential electrode and you can notice that the resistance values are increasing as the distance between the earth grid and the potential grid electrode is increasing which is logical because we want minimum resistance near to the earth grid and then uh, it's, it can be a little more uh, when we go far from that and as you notice the resistance is increasing the voltage drop across the points will also increase and that's why this method is called fall of potential now when we say voltage drop it basically the potential is falling step by step and that is the reason why it is called the fall of potential testing then once we have all the reading what we do is we take average of let's say middle three four ratings and then the average resistance value that we get it should be ideally less than the values defined by the standard and if that is the case, if that is true, then uh, the health of the earth grid is good. Uh, the impedance is low and it can take uh, the fault current that may occur. So that is how the fall of potential is done. If, uh, for example, the resistance is higher compared to what it should be, then there is something wrong with that. Maybe uh, the earth grid is broken somewhere uh, or maybe there is corrosion or 
other issues so that is something that we need to investigate further right this is a very comprehensive test and used uh, almost worldwide uh, very famously done used for testing the substation grounding i hope it is clear to you now the next part of testing is we also need to check the healthiness of the grid that is underneath the ground of the substation we checked the impedance but then we also need to check the healthiness the connections the continuity of the grid so for that we have ground grid integrity test it's again very simple methodology very effective as well so we have uh, ground grid underneath uh, the ground uh, beneath the ground of the substation and there are different equipments which are connected to that now basically what we are doing with this test is we are checking the continuity of the earth grid we are checking if there is any breaking point if there is any corrosion and that will give us uh, the signal with the help of this test so how are we doing let's say we have the test meter again we have connected one part to the transformer or thing for example and another maybe to the gantry of the substation or maybe a tower there and what we will do will pass a high current that goes up to 300 amps ac or dc through this circuit right now when the current will pass because there is a resistance there will be voltage drop happening into that and we will measure that voltage drop and thereby we'll calculate the resistance simply using the ohms law right if the voltage drop is low that means the resistance is low and that means the health of the grid or the continuity of the grid is good if resistance is high voltage drop will be high and that is something problematic that means uh, maybe uh, the connection points of the grid are not good there is loose connection or maybe corrosion is there uh, so those things can happen so again the method is similar we measure the voltage drop there by calculating the resistance if resistance is low that means uh, the continuity is good now this is similar i don't know if you have done that experiment but i used to do it a lot uh, we used to take a long wire we used to connect one end of multimeter to the one end of the wire and the another one to the another end and if that multimeter beeps that means the continuity is there right if something is not right within the inside the insulation then the beep will not come out of that multimeter uh, that means there is a problem the continuity is not there so the same way uh, this is what we are testing uh, but here basically we are passing a high current uh, to check the voltage drop in that if voltage drop is high that means there is something issue and then you need to go and dig that particular area to check what is wrong same way you can you know test it uh, to different different parts of the substation uh, to check the continuity of the ground this is very important this can be performed uh, on a new substation or even on the existing substations now the balance method like for example the soil resistivity test is generally performed uh, on a green field project that means a substation that is newly constructed so before we construct the substation uh, we need to perform this test in order to decide on what kind of grounding methodology should be used the the method is simple we create a voltage drop and then we measure the resistivity of the soil and based on that we select the grounding system which we already talked about in the previous video so that is soil resistivity test and then lastly uh, the step and touch potential potential or voltage measurement so this is again same what we will do we'll create a voltage drop and then simply we will measure it so how it's done for example uh, to measure the touch potential of course we will not make a human stand there uh, what they generally do is they put a metal plate a weighted metal plate basically and then they will connect a voltage probe here uh, and the voltage drop will be created and then the resistive value will be calculated if that resistance value is lower than what standard uh, you know recommends then it's good to go but if it is not uh, then you will have to do testing again and maybe correct the systems accordingly right so that is how the step and touch voltage measurement is done again this is not something you will see frequently done uh, maybe on the new substation before commissioning uh, it can be performed so we talked about the fall of potential we talked about uh, the ground grid integrity the soil resistivity the step and touch voltage measurement all of this works on the same principle you need to measure the resistance of that you need to create a voltage drop across it and then measure the value right so 
that is how the grounding testing is done for substation. I hope uh, it's clear to you. So to quickly summarize, uh, the fall of potential we use to check the overall healthiness of the system and the impedance of the grounding system. The ground grid integrity is used to check the continuity of uh, the grid. Uh, if the resistance is high, that means there is some issue or the breakpoint in between that we need to check. Soil resistivity is something done before the substation is constructed and based on the results, uh, the grounding methods can be selected. Same way, uh, the step and touch voltage measurement is checked to see uh, how much uh, the resistance is there, how much is the voltage drop coming uh, when somebody touches the metal part compared to ground. So those were the methods of grounding testing. Now, if you want to go a little bit deeper into the grounding, then I do have a podcast with one of the industry experts on substation grounding. I'll put a link for it down in the description. You can go and definitely check it out. If the, this video was helpful and it helped you understand how the grounding testing is done, then do comment helpful in the comment section. That In that way, I'll get to know that this kind of content is helping you so that I can bring more of such content. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning. <laughs>